Okay, so here we are with the um, pure sine wave inverter installed. Um, before I had anything plugged in, this thing said it was putting out 88 watts. I'm guessing that has to do with the amount of power that it just takes to run the inverter itself. It has cooling fans that apparently don't turn off. It's not very warm in here, so I, I don't think they have any kind of an automatic temperature sensor switch. Now when I installed this, I, I put this wood in here, so there's a bit of standoff on this thing away from the wall. Um, I don't know how hot they get, maybe it's a concern on the design, but there's vents back here. It's a standoff in the wall. I think that's a, you know going to be just fine. Um, the fridge is, an, is apparently taking 100 watts. So um, the other thing is I noticed that um, it's clicking between 100 and 188. So um, maybe what's happening there is when the fridge gets to its temperature, it automatically shuts off, and it um, it kind of goes down on the amount of current draw that it creates. So yeah, it's starting to intermittently go off because the fridge has reached its temperature. Um, it's it's cooling level. We've got both batteries hooked up now. These things have jumper wires to go parallel. But individually, they're hooked up to the inverter. So if I put another battery in here, it's actually, I'm going to have to move these, get some more jumper wires, and the new battery goes in the center. And uh, so as far as my power usage right now, um, yeah, it's kind of hard to get that on there. But it says that uh, the batteries are at 91%. I plugged this whole thing and got it going about 10 minutes ago, and it's still at 91%. So... How accurate that is, I don't know, but these batteries have uh, 100 amp hours each. So in theory, if I'm away for several days and come back and start using the batteries, um, I'm using battery power running this stuff at a faster rate than the solar panels produce it. However, um, from the looks of things, I could go for a while. And by adding panels to the system, I, I figured out that I can put another six more on the roof, uh, which will give me um, another 90 watts, which would give me around 220-ish total. And 220 is total power production is still not enough to guarantee that I'm going to run everything and keep the batteries charged up. So there would still have to be uh, either some power rationing, a carry-out system, or both. Now, with a carryout system, I think I can do that. The the other thing would be the possibility of a um, a windmill for some bonus power, but those require different charge controllers because of the irregular power they put out. So um, this charge controller, I think, is strictly uh, for solar panels. So basically, and I I would have to add amorphous panels, which are um, a little bit heavier. Um, Although I think in the long run they last longer than the polycrystalline, and supposedly they're cheaper than polycrystalline. And I'm I'm doing a math on amorphous versus polycrystalline, and uh, I'm not coming up with any conclusions one way or the other. Um, there's some polycrystalline panels that are manufactured here in Oregon by an outfit called Solar World. And they've told me when I went to the factory and inquired about the situation that their panels are really, the voltage and everything is set up for grid-tight systems. It's, it's not really for off-grid. So there's two places you get off-grid panels, and that's uh, pretty much China and Germany. And here in the United States and the West Coast, um, your stuff's going to come from China. You know, that's reality. And uh, you know, if there's an American manufacturer on this stuff that's even remotely price competitive, which isn't hard to do because this stuff all has to get shipped from overseas, uh, let me know. Uh, because I have some grid tie panels that it turned out, yeah, they push a different voltage. Even with all the adapters and turn switches and everything, it, it's going to be really tricky to integrate them with this. And I, I'm thinking I'm just going to get more of the amorphous panels at Harbor Freight. But uh, anyway, everything's working, and uh, working pretty much the way I expected it to. And so it's this stage in the uh, off-grid uh, project.